welcome to our discussion here. My name is Robin, Dr. Robin Bowen. I'm the, been the director of the uh, DBA program for a few years. And Hello, my name is Dr. Keith Don. Um, in September 2017, I'll be taking on the uh, directorship of the DBA award. Um, and we're taking this opportunity now for me to um, ask Robin some questions about the DBA programme um, to help me, as, as I understand more about it, but also hopefully to help you and, and to answer some questions for you. Um, so we'll, we'll start off. The, uh, as you, you probably just picked up that Robin and I both have PhDs, all right? And um, we know that a PhD is, um, it makes an original contribution to theoretical knowledge and it might have some kind of impact on um, practice or policy um, out in industry. But Robin, um, how does a DBA differ from a PhD? Okay, um, a DBA is still a doctoral award, so a DBA still requires some contribution to knowledge mm -hmm. as part of getting the doctor title. Right. So if you're a doctor, one of the things is that you will you will make some contribution to knowledge the other factor involved in a dba mm -hmm. is the, uh, making some contribution to what we call professional practice mm -hmm. not necessarily just for the professions as it were yeah. but actually contributing to industry or commerce or something like that mm -hmm. in what is becoming a more developing knowledge-based economy. So right. I think the DBA yeah. is focused at those sort of people sure. that want to make a sort of doctoral level contribution mm -hmm. at, in, within industry or within commerce or that sort of thing. Okay, so there's more of an emphasis, emphasis on the contribution to practice and industry than there is on the theoretical yeah. contribution. And I, I, yeah. I will emphasize that we've never seen the DBA as, as a PhD light. Yeah, sure. We still think of it as we need to make sure that it, when we're giving out doctorates, they are mm. proper doctorates that provide new knowledge. So, sure. yeah, they're at the same intellectual level, but they have a slightly different focus. Okay, thank yeah. you for that. That's okay, a wonderful pleasure. explanation. Um, okay, my next question is who would be the ideal kind of candidate for this? This DBA program. Okay, so yeah, fine. So what? Given what I've just said, the ideal candidate is somebody who has got a master's degree, mm -hmm. has worked in industry for a few years or commerce or whatever you want, yeah. and and has therefore built up some practical knowledge about what business is like. Mm -hmm that has actually t taken part in a, in a reasonably serious managerial level yeah. in business and actually starts to know things about business at a practical level that they right. won't necessarily have learned through an academic qualification, you know, doing sure. your first degree or your master's. Yeah. Because I think, I think that development of what we might call expertise mm -hmm is really important yeah. in trying to develop knowledge and, it, and and that's what I think the DBA can bring right rather than the, the PhD which can be a complete could be a comp abstract theoretical mm. piece yeah I think I mean they, they never are completely abstract and theoretical in business particularly because business is essentially a mm. practical activity anyway. Yeah, sure. You know, this is not studying the ancient Greeks or that sort of thing. Yeah. It, it is a practical topic anyway. Yeah. But I think that's, and I think that's why we think that. Okay, so it's a, a doctoral award for practitioners who want to demonstrate that they've reached that level of, of qualification and of intellectual thinking um, and are making a contribution to their own practice. Um, yeah. I think thank yeah, you. That yeah, sounds, that's great. sounds good. Okay, next question. Yeah. Um, entry requirements. Okay. What does somebody need in order to be eligible to join our DBA program? Okay, so they need a master's degree. 
in any any discipline? Any, any discipline. Okay. I think the regulations say it should be a cognate discipline, so right. it should be somewhere related to business. Yeah. Okay. In some form. Right. I mean, we have had people doing doctorates at the University of Gloucestershire that have studied the economy of Roman Britain. Okay. Okay. But that's so cognate, though, isn't it? Exactly. It was a business. So, it was a country, yeah, yeah, exactly. So Roman studies might fit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got that. So a master's degree in what's seen to be a cognate discipline, yeah. they need two years of managerial work experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. They need a sufficient level of English proficiency. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they also need to provide us with a proposal. Right, okay. Can I just pick up on that? I think just to confirm the level of English proficiency is the IELTS six and a half or 6.5, yeah. just to confirm. And, and, ver Sorry. and very often, I think if people have already got a qualification from an English university, mm. yeah. they don't need to take the IELTS. Okay. That's the we, we accept that an English university qualification sure. means they've got sufficient. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I've got that. Um, and next question. These hopefully these are the kind of questions you would want to ask, Robin. Um, yeah. It tells the course structure. Um, there's some element of taught um, input and there's independent study. Yeah. So how does exactly. That work? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so. Given what I've said about this is a post-experience qualification, mm. some of the people that are applying for the DBA may well have been out, out of academic study for four or five years while Absolutely. they've been developing their career. Very likely, yeah. isn't it? So we've put more course structure into the DBA mm -hmm. yeah. to help people to come up to speed with academic study or get back into study. Mm. So we run a series of four courses. Right. Okay. We start off with an introduction to reflective practice, which okay. makes you start to think about and reflect upon what you might learn, what you might do, what mm. your learning styles are, and all that sort of back to study stuff. Yeah. Then we talk about a literature review because academic study is very often based upon what people have done before. Mm. We don't want to reinvent the wheel, so let's go back and have a look what yeah. the current studies say and what, what has not been done already, because if we're looking for something new, we don't want to suddenly come up a bit later and say, oh, well, actually, someone's done that already. So yeah. we, have, we have to establish the body of knowledge before we can then develop the newness. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So uh, we understand, and we, partially it's about covering your back. <laughs> Interesting way of thinking about yeah. it, yeah, yeah. That yeah. You, you find that stuff that, yeah. but partially you get involved in what the, the actual discussion in that mm -hmm. discipline is about. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and what the current trends are. Then we talk about research fundamentals. Yeah methodological fundamentals it's called mm -hmm. and we get into at this doctoral level we get into quite a bit of philosophical discussion yeah. about the nature of reality mm -hmm. the talking about what the nature of the objects are we want to study right and objects how, and subjects in fact. well no i think no no i think I we think, thought we'd have a conversation on this <laughs> <laughs> i think i think what what it is we want to study and what's the nature of those things yeah. is it people is it data is it static does it need our interpretation is it yeah. is it dependent upon the individual all that sort of thing mm -hmm. I would call the objects of the study myself okay so we need to think about what sort of things they are we're talking about right. okay yeah and then on the on the final, mo well, the final module, except there's one twist to this. Yes. Okay. Wait for it, it'll yeah. come. Um, the final module is actual methods and mm -hmm. talking about what it is you're actually going to do yeah, and, sure. and what sort of analysis and statistical analysis or interview analysis and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But what we do yes. is we get, we get them 
to, or we get the students to submit the reflective practice module at the end. Mm, right. So while they're in this phase, yeah. they're still thinking about what they're doing. So that helps develop that process as well. Right, so okay. the, the very first module is assessed at the very end of all modules yeah. or courses, if you want to call it. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. That's really helpful. Um, how many um, how many sessions or how many runs of the uh, the modules or courses are there in a year? Well, that might depend upon you as the new course leader. Okay. okay. How, how, how many, our timetabling works. Yeah, yes, how your timetabling yes. works. Yeah. So it, it depends on a number of factors, I think. Yeah. We have often run two cohorts a year, right. but that might change. So okay. We'll just watch this space on that, I think. Sure. As far as the course structure is concerned, they're delivered in three-day blocks now. Yeah. So each module has a three-day block of teaching, yeah. and then it's supported by webinars, mm -hmm. okay? So people log on, and, and take the opportunity for a discussion in the webinar. So that supports right. the development after the teaching. Right. So that's been our new me me. method of doing <coughs> it. Sorry. That's been our new method of doing it for yeah. the last 18 months or so. Okay, thank yeah. you. So, so a formal talk block and then the discussion yeah. webinar. After and that so. process to get through the four modules takes about 15 months. Okay, 15 months, that's an yeah. important time scale to understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, another burning question most people have is, what are the assessments? Okay. Please, or broadly the, the, the style of the assessment, yeah. Most of them are a written assessment. Yeah. Okay. Um, depending on the, the course loading. Mm -hmm. We do, in one of them, people need to conduct to combine a digital story, right? Okay, okay, which gives them an opportunity, perhaps on media like mm -hmm. this, to talk about their research proposal. Yeah. So, in a way, t both to present and to articulate mm -hmm. what they're doing. Okay? okay. Yeah. And that, of course, they can do that in a written format, but it gives us an opportunity to look at that at a different level. And for the reflective practice thing or assignment, mm. they have to submit a portfolio. Right. Okay. A sort of either a diary. <coughs> and we may, I mean, we may, depending on what you want to do, uh, we may sort of do that as an online portfolio shortly. But at the moment, it's a written diary. or yeah. So you can put your pictures in and what you thought about and all that and how your thinking developed. Right, yeah? okay, thank you. Um, okay. And actually, there's, there's a nice point there about the digital story. Uh, I know when I was deeply immersed in my PhD, I wanted to talk to people about what, my research, and I would have loved to have done a digital story and tell the world what I was doing. Yeah. So, uh, the, as Robbie says, to articulate that is important because you rehearse your arguments, and sometimes they get better. So yeah. I think that's a really yeah. nice way yeah. of doing it. Okay, um, that's, that's fantastic. So a great start, thank you, about what the DBA is and the kind of candidates that, that, that we need. Um, the second part of this was really to, to take a little wander down what should be in the, the proposal, the, the DBA proposal that would come to us for us to um, really assess whether you, know, you are of potential uh, as, a, as a doctoral candidate. So um, I, I guess, Robin, it's a bit of an open question. What kind of research proposal are we looking for? What, what are the key elements to that proposal? Okay. The, difficult, the difficulty with the proposal is that if we talked about the fact that people who are applying for this are coming back to academic mm. study, yeah. is to get some academic depth in the proposal and to restrict yourself to a thousand words. Well, I think it's a thousand words, correct me. A thousand if I'm to fifteen hundred, I Is think. It? But yes, yeah, you know, it's, somewhere it's, it's, so it, it's, it's in a way it's really it's particularly short. Yeah. Given that, you know, by the end of this process you need to produce a thesis of about sixty or eighty thousand mm. words. So what's interesting or what we need from this proposal 
is firstly the topic area. Yeah. Okay. So we want to know what sort of particular subject mm -hmm. you would like to study. Okay. And I think the topic area is important and is worth thinking about because actually doing a doctor is a lot of hard work, as you and I know. Yes? Yes. So you need an interesting topic to be able to keep you motivated. Yeah. Actually, this is what I wanted to do. This is I'm my choice. And when things get difficult and you think, well, I can't do this any longer, I've just got to keep going, yeah. you sort of say to yourself, well, I made this choice and this is what I wanted to do. And that's, that's the opportunity we have, especially when students are self-funding, yeah. okay? So this is not a funded research program no, where, that's right. where you say, right, you will be doing X we give people the choice because they're self-funding. So choosing your topic and choosing a topic that you're interested in is a good thing. And then that gives us an idea of being able to support that topic. Sure, okay. because importantly we have to have the supervisory or the supervision capability to do that. Yeah. So for the University of Gloucestershire, for example, if you were to choose a DBA that investigated the potential of space travel for Virgin Galactic, we probably couldn't supervise that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so there's that sort of thing. And then possibly going on to how to choose the research topic. Would that be? As I said, I think I think. Oh, you got more to I, say on that? No. One? Well, yeah. I think I've I think I've I've covered that mm -hmm. by saying choose something you're interested in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could that, add, to, that, add to that. I always say to to my research students. Um, get something you're absolutely fired up by, something you've got a passion for, you know, is it an issue? Is yep. it something you see that's wrong or is it something that you see that's so right that you want to spread the word, okay? So if you can get some passion in there, you're gonna live with it for however many years. Um, hopefully <laughs> yeah. four if you're full-time, it can be seven if you're part-time. Um, so it's, it's, it's gotta be a, you know, a long-term partner, shall okay. we say. So as I, as I talked about before, we talked about literature review, so yeah. some, some good discussion about where they think the current dis debate is in yeah. their topic area. Mm -hmm. So if, if they're knowledgeable, and it can be difficult if you're not in the academic world, but there's lots of access to papers and stuff these yeah. days. <laughs> some knowledge about where the current debate is in their area so if they want to do human resources what are the issues in human resources um, etc and give us a flavor that you've actually taken some time to think about that yeah, yeah? yeah. i've done a bit of delving about and these seem to be the issues can i take that forward so a bit, little bit about research methodology or yeah. research appro research design, if you want to call it that. But that's quite difficult, and it, and it often trips yeah. people up with and the difference between sorry. qualitative and quantitative and yeah. realist, and you know. Yeah. So a little go at that is fine. Okay. But then I think I think the other thing is to start at this stage in thinking about how am I going to do it, mm. yeah? And how realistic. How realistic. Yeah. If I want to investigate, for instance, Facebook's use of social media, which we're on at the moment, Hello. am I going to be able to interview people at Facebook about it? Mm. Probably not, okay? So how am I going, actually, how am I going to get some information out of this? What sort of contacts, how do, you, how do I think I might be able to get hold of some data that can... So yeah. thinking about what I'm actually going to do and how I might do it, mm. and then thinking about, uh, that I could answer that question if I interviewed these yeah, people, sure. if I interviewed human resource managers, if or, 
I interviewed small business managers about their strategies. I could perhaps talk to small business mm. managers because they're sort of easier to get at than yeah. company CEOs. Yes. Yeah. And actually there's that methodological issue around interviewing elite people which yeah. they wouldn't necessarily know about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So okay. thinking about that then, and, uh, and then I think that the real, th what is probably said about interviews anyway, we have to interview every student yes. that we're going to accept, okay? So one of the thing about a proposal is it gets you to an interview, mm -hmm. yeah? With either me or you or both. Or today both of us, Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, and then being able to talk about this proposal to us yeah. and we got this proposal that we could talk about mm -hmm. then that, that all and we we sort of to be honest with you we make a judgment on, on the candidate and whether mm -hmm. we think they can do it yes so it's, yeah. it's on potential it's not just on the written um, proposal it's part of the discussion as well as to whether you can expand and really clarify our questions about what your proposal um, is trying to, to cover. I think the, the classic one that we've found uh, today is, um, and we normally find it, the very first proposal um, usually is so broad and lacks, lacks some kind of focus. So very often our conversation early on in these interviews is, well, could you just explain again, what is it, what is it you're trying to find out? Um, maybe even think, you know, can you just state it in one single question? What are you trying to find out? That's a good way of thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, thank you for that. I think we've probably covered, covered most what of would this. go into that proposal. This is this will be the interesting one. Um, and um, I think <laughs> Sorry. you'll have seen so many of these and, and hopefully you'll find, <laughs> find this interesting as well. Um, what sort of common mistakes do you encounter where a proposal might just not cut it or there might be some really basic errors and I don't mean typographical or um, you know language based but anything that, that, that seems you know, incongruous and doesn't work. You know as well as I do <laughs> that being yeah. an academic yeah. you read a lot of stuff yeah. yeah yeah you spend a lot of your time reading stuff so typographic or language errors look careless if you're not careful you think oh, well how much care is someone put into mm. this if they can't you know spell check the thing yeah yeah so that i think you want to try and set the tone Start, with that's that, the starting yeah. point and we talked yeah. about you know we need to talk you need to look at the current literature so something that looks a bit a bit stale mm. you think well actually this could have been done already. Yeah. Um, and as I say, some ideas, not tell, not thinking about whether what they're proposing is possible to achieve. Yeah. Like, is it? Yeah. Is it can realistic? I actually, is it realistic? I think so. That's not so word. broad that it. You know, you think about boiling a kettle rather than boiling the ocean. I think that's yeah. maybe a way of thinking about it. Actually, <laughs> um, I guess another one that we we tend to encounter as well, isn't it? Um, is where somebody might decide that they want to use a whole range of different data gathering methods when actually they might only need to use one you know there's no there's no need to say well i'm going to do some interviews and then i might do some focus groups then i might do a questionnaire and i might triangulate that even further and i might do some observation right it just shows that you know a few methods and actually you dilute the kind of work that you would do um, the way to think about a method is from your research focus your topic or your question what data do you actually need and then how can you best get those data and that's as simple as, as as it needs to be you don't have to go through a tick box of lots and lots of different methods do you no, 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 no. sorry I, I took over that question no, no, that's, no, fine. No, that's fine that's okay fine. um I think we'll probably come to the end there but can you think of anything else that you would, um, you would no add? no I d no I can't think so I um I'm certainly sure that at the University of Gloucestershire we would welcome your 
proposals and your applications yep, of course. Uh, via Student Connect and, and we look forward to seeing some more proposals and, and we actually we find the work exciting. Yes, I, I, I agree. I, think I agree. I, I'd, it's true. I'd just like yeah. to say yeah. that, you know, although I'm, you know, going to be handed over to Keith, I've often found this work really exciting. Mm. And the people who come across with stuff that they're really interested in, mm. it can be a joy to read. And yeah. you think, yeah, I can see that happening. Yes. And that's what's. That's what's good about it. I agree. And if we were to take our, our broader role at university where we're teaching standard courses at undergraduate level, you kind of see the same sort of thing. Whereas with a piece of research like a DBA or a PhD, you see the individual and their uniqueness stamped on this work, you know, from the, the, the concept, the original idea, all the way through the passion to the desperation and the, you know, the completion and the elation at the end. So, yeah, I agree entirely. Yeah. So, Robin, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, yours. And thank you all for your time. And thank you to Student Connect for, uh, for their time today. And um, we'll see you soon.